Hello, everyone. My name is Li Jie Grisstrong. I'm an associate professor from the George Washington University. Today, I will give a short presentation about three-dimensional bulk printing nylon material for medical device application. At the beginning, I would like to briefly introduce three-dimensional bulk printing technique. Uh, you can see several printer on this slides is also available in my lab. They have different printing mechanism. The first one is called sterilizography based printer. It uses UV laser to photo cross-link hydrogen material. The second one is also really popular in the market. It's called fused deposition modeling based printer. You can use that printer uh, to melt polymer material and then create a 3D structure. The last two is uh, the last two printer are bell platinum and also inkjet bell printing based uh, um, system. Uh, they can uh, very easily to include cells, bell active factor, and bell material together. Currently, my lab is focused on complex tissue regeneration. Our long term goal is for organ regeneration. So you can see several three dimensional bell printed constructs uh, fabricated in our lab. Um, whatever you designed in the computer, you can uh, print it by different printer. The first several constructs are sterilizography printed constructs. Uh, you can design different pattern geometry uh, and also anatomy shape like the knee constructs here. We can also include nano material into the three-dimensional printing ink. Uh, in the following, I will explain why. Currently, the human tissue organ, they have a lot of nano feature, like they have nano structured extracellular matrix. However, current three-dimensional bulk printer um, had one challenge. They only create microstructured scaffold. It's really hard to create the nano structured scaffold using the current available printer. Uh, there are some nano printer available, but they cannot create larger tissue constructs. They only create tiny subjects. You can see them through the microscope, uh, like electron microscope. So considering that challenge, we use nanomaterial, for example, nanoparticle, nanosphere, nanotube, nanofiber, as the nano ink to create uh, the final biomimetic nano structure, three-dimensional printed constructs. In the following, I gave two examples about uh, integrate three-dimensional bulk printing and nanomaterial for different tissue generation. The first one is for vascularized bone regeneration. In order to create the complex vascularized bone tissue, we first use computer-aided design to pre-design an uh, interconnected vascular channel inside here. And then we use a 3D printer to fabricate the whole constructs. Furthermore, we use a biomimetic self-assembly nanomaterial to layer by layer uh, modify the uh, printed constructs with total 20 layers. On the first 50 layer, we include osteogenic BMP2 growth factor inside. On the top five layer, we include angiogenic VEGF peptide uh, growth factor over there. Uh, one interesting um, a smart part about the whole system is when you're seeding the endothelial cell, like human umbilical wing endothelial cells into the constructs, the endothelial cell will secrete enzyme MMP2, which can degrade the self-assembly nanomaterial layer by layer and then trigger the controlled growth factor release. Uh, we observed a pretty nice vascularization inside the constructs. The second application is related to neural engineering. Using three-dimensional bulk printing nanomaterial, we can create conductive neural guidance constructs like this one. We include 0.01% um, multiple walled cup nanotube. Uh, we also observe the pretty good conductivity and also primary neuron cells uh, growth and axon extension compared to the control without nanomaterial. In addition, we can also include the, the co-shell nanosphere as the printing ink uh, and use sterilizography to fabricate the constructs which can also sustain the deliver the neural growth factor for longer term. So finally, I would like to thank the students who perform uh, this project, uh, Dr. Haitautri, Dr. Benjamin Holmes, uh, Wei Zhu, and Sejong Li, they are my PhD students. And also, I would like to thank the funding support uh, for these projects. Thank you very much for your attention.